Have you ever played a game of football where one of your friends misses the ball and squeezes their foot into your shin, making you love them a little less? Well, I have several times. It's extremely painful and results in swearing pouring out of my mouth like word vomit. But if you think that is bad, spare a thought for these lads who compete in the traditional English combat sport known as shin kicking. Yes, you heard me, shin kicking. The things you learn working for Kenhub. Anyway, so why is the kick to the shin so sore? Well, it could be because there's no musculature cushioning the blow. After all, if you feel your legs, you'll notice the anterior border of your shin just deep to the skin. It could also be down to the fact that your shin bone is covered by a fibrous layer called periosteum, which is filled with pain receptors. So today we're going to be discussing your shin bone, also known as the tibia, in our tutorial on the bones and soft tissues of the knee and the leg. Before we begin, I just want to clear up an issue that often arises when transitioning from everyday terms to anatomical terms. So as a kid, your arm is your arm and your leg is your leg, but not in anatomy. Instead, your arm or upper limb is divided into the arm and forearm and your leg or lower limb is divided into the thigh and leg. So when I say we're going to be talking about the bones and the soft tissues of the leg, I'm really talking about this region here between the knee and the foot. Okay, so now that we've got the terminology down, I'd like to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about in this tutorial. So first of all, I'm going to quickly introduce you to the knee joint and the bones that form this joint. We'll then look at the bones of the knee and the leg, focusing on their bony features and muscle attachment points. Next, we'll talk about some soft tissues of the knee and the leg, including the capsule and retinacula, the menisci, the ligaments and the bursi. Finally, we'll bring our tutorial to a close with some clinical notes about shin splints. So without further ado, let's get started with the knee joint. So here we can see the knee joint highlighted in green from an anterior perspective. And you might be wondering why I want to talk about the knee joint. Well, our tutorial will feature bones that contribute towards this joint, as well as soft tissues that support it. So it's mainly for context. The knee joint is a synovial hinge joint, which is formed by three bones, the femur, the patella, and the tibia. And it's worth noting that the femur is actually a bone of the thigh, but because it contributes towards the knee joint, we'll discuss it briefly in our tutorial. As I just mentioned, the femur is a bone of the thigh. Therefore, I don't want to give too much of our time to it. So today we'll be focusing on the articular surfaces of the femur that are involved in the knee joint. Distally, the femur has two condyles, a medial condyle and a lateral condyle, which articulate with one of the bones of the leg, the tibia. We can see both condyles here, highlighted in green, and the specific articulation of the femoral condyles with the tibia is sometimes referred to as the tibiofemoral joint. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.